So we'll just kick off with a, a quick introduction and then we'll, we'll go back to the code because uh, a lot of what I'm going to show is just how I went about planning my summer vacation. All right? Now there's a bit of a plan uh, to this. Is, that, is there anybody on Twitter, social medias, stuff like that? If you do tweet about this presentation, don't say the core message from the presentation. The reason why I say that is because my family don't know how I plan the summer vacation. <laughs> so, so it'll come as a little bit of a surprise. They probably have their suspicions, but um, anyway. So let's, 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 let's get on with trying to, to do this. So just a quick background to myself. Um, I'm from Dublin. Uh, I do different things. Uh, I do some teaching in uh, TU Dublin. I've written several books. Um, what else can you do? If you search for me, uh, be careful who you get, because that's not me. Right? So just a bit of confusion there sometimes, but if you put in kind of data mining, machine learning, or Oracle, you know, you get things to do with me. All right? um, so, what was the aim of the presentation? So, the, the aim of the presentation really came out of a little bit of a play around with using a variety of different technologies and a few different libraries to see hey, we're going to go on holidays, could I actually use some of these technologies to actually plan the holiday? All right, so because a lot of it is to do when we start seeing examples of machine learning, they can be very intense type examples or very serious type examples, and sometimes those examples are very hard to relate to. So this is something that hopefully is a little bit of fun, a little bit of humor, uh, and something that you can relate to, all right? So, um, and by, by doing it is that, you know, we can learn things along the way. Right. So the purpose of it, right, like starting with any sort of machine learning, data science like project, you always start with a business goal. What, is, what do you want to be able to achieve? What, what I wanted to achieve was, could I plan my summer vacation, right, using, using a variety of different technologies, using Python machine learning, uh, a little bit of databases, and, and a few other different libraries that we might have. Um, if you want to, you know, you know, I'm on Twitter, uh, if you want to follow me there, you can get more details off it. I'll be posting up uh, a link to the notebook and the data set, uh, probably Monday or Tuesday kind of, kind of thing. So if you want to kind of get your hands on, the, on that, you can go and do it. But, you know, part of the, I think, some of the problems around kind of approaching kind of machine learning projects is that a lot of people will get in to talk about, it's all about the maths or the statistics and, you know, it's really, really hard kind of complex stuff. Or it's all about the algorithms. You know, the algorithms are the most important thing that we need to be dealing with. And then we have the people going on, this is a really hard problem, and you know, it's so hard you wouldn't understand. All right? The reason why you use that quote, because it was said to me once. And there's you know, kind of in a way is that you know, most of what we hear about as well is about deep learning and it's about finding pictures about my cats and dogs. So in, in a way, that's a little bit of, you know, we're getting more of those kind of you know, slightly uh, edge case type examples. But when we come to actually developing kind of machine learning projects or doing machine learning in the real world, we've already heard presentations today that talk about productionalizing it, putting it into production. And the reality is you are going to have a team effort and you are going to have a team uh, kind of approach to what technology you're going to use. You're not necessarily going to use one technology or one language or one tool or one library. You're going to use uh, a complete suite of it. Right? And that kind of brings us back to a little bit of our kind of software uh, development and end of things. And you know, what do people mean by machine learning? This is kind of one of my favorite quotes about or definitions of what machine learning is. It's a team for putting stamps on it, on data, for putting a label on data. So instead of us having the right code to do like if then statements, is can we use some of these tools or languages or libraries to help us to find patterns in the data that we wouldn't be able to find ourselves by either querying it, exploring it. Uh, and doing some if-then statements, right? So we're going to be kind of learning with examples. And, you know, we probably have seen lots of examples of where it's been used in, across lots of different technologies. And I kind of do this, you know, the 10-year challenge, right? So it's kind of like, you know, what it was 10 years ago versus now versus 10 years in the future. You know, the exact same list is around because machine learning and those technologies have been around for longer than I have been around in, in the vast majority of cases. They're just becoming more widespread of what we want to do. And the reason why it's all important, because it's becoming mainstream. It's no longer a specialty. It's no longer a specialist job of, of data scientists. Now, you may, do have, you may need specialisms in certain scenarios, but most of you have done something to, with data science already and machine learning. Yeah? 
right? So like quite a few are putting up your hands or you've had a, a play with it. But sometimes when we start doing this, it's, it can be a little bit uh, difficult to find out where do you start. You know, and it can be a little bit confusing because you see all of these different variations. And then you start seeing about what, what language should I start using or should I be using R or SAS or Python or uh, Java or Golang or whatever else. And you know, you know, Python is, is really popular at the moment. But getting back to doing these kind of projects is that machine learning only plays a small part in your project. Okay, it's not a big thing in your project, it's a small part. There's lots of different other elements that we need to kind of take care of. So, hands up who's watched Shrek? Right, you know when he's going off on his adventure in the first movie with Donkey, and he's trying to explain about ogres. And he's saying about ogres are very complex creatures. They're like onions, layers. Right, so machine learning is only one part of one of those layers in what we do. Because when we're developing applications, you know, we do use a lot of different things, right? And one of those things now is going to be like machine learning for what we want to do. So my business problem, like I said, is planning my summer vacation. So kind of, you know, nice sunny beach holiday. But we're going on a driving holiday to Scotland. <laughs> so beach, sunglasses, yeah, might necessarily work out. So it's going to be a family holiday. So a lot of that is going to be trying to plan things around the, you know, the family. So the wife, kids will have their a particular kind of ideas on it. So what I'm going to go through is a bit of a story, a bit of a journey of how I planned it, okay, and how we end up by doing it. So like I said at the beginning about if you're going to tweet out about it or share a message on it, just don't mention the details of what or how I did it, all right? So we're going to go around Scotland, and what's Scotland famous for is kind of the bagpipes, if you're a fan of that. You know, there's, there's rugby, there's all the, the castles and the lots and the mountains, you know, if you're really into seeing Loch Ness, <laughs> Ness Eve, you can. But what else is Scotland famous for? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> right? So remember we're saying we're planning the summer vacation, so it's about me. All right? <laughs> so it's not about my wife and kids, right? So look, this whole is about me. All right? I'm kind of like, so like I said, be careful what you tweet out, right? So it's about whiskey. All right? And then and what I wanted to do is, could I actually plan it around all the different whiskey facilities? And one of the challenges I had was like, where do I get the data from? You know, it's like, you know, a lot of these examples. So if you Google our Scotland whiskey data set, there's one that's been around for, I don't know, over a decade, right? So I kind of, okay, let's use that. And what we're going to effectively do is go through like the Christie M life cycle of doing like a, a, a machine learning data science type project and being able to develop it on beyond that. And the, basically the machine learning technique, which is going to be just one part of the solution, is going to be clustered. So trying to group the, the different whiskey distilleries in Scotland into different categories effectively based on their characteristics. So what I want to do is find the distilleries that would have whiskies that match my taste. And then could I organise the, the, the driving holiday based on that? Okay? So, so this is how I went about doing it. Right, so, like I said, there's a lot of code. For those that are on the edge, if you want to move a bit closer, you, you might need to. Right, so like I said, I'm going to make this available probably Monday, Tuesday, okay? Uh, and I'll also include the data set that you want to use. Now, the data set is, you can go, like the, the notebook will also handle if you want to just use the, the CSV file. So you can ignore this first bit. So I'm a bit of a data guy, like you know, I kind of work with data, so data's going to be in the database. So what I have is the data in the database, and what I'm effectively doing is I'm just going to connect to the database, and I'm going to pull in the data set. That's, that's simply all I'm doing in, in the first particular case. And what I'm also doing is I'm kind of taking some of the, the attributes from it and just relabeling them to make it a little bit more consistent in in how they're actually laid out, so kind of mixture of different cases and stuff like that. So I was just standardizing on it. So once I bring that data set in, then I can start exploring it. Now, when I started to explore it, we can start seeing, well, we have the name of the distillery, and we have, uh, for the like their main whiskey in it, um, we have their characteristics. Now, I didn't create this data set. Somebody got some research money back over 10 years ago to create this data set. <laughs> I don't know how they did it, but like, they wanted to do that. So they went around all of these distilleries, all the main 
kind of the highbrow kind of distilleries in Scotland, took their main whiskey and kind of using these different attributes, you know, body, sweetness, smoky, tobacco, honey, spicy, and so on, and characterized it and they built up this data set. Alright? And that's what I'm going to use. Now there was a little bit of extra work that I needed to do because we had postcode here and we had the lat long. So the lat long was based on uh, miles and feet and I just converted it into more traditional uh, lat long kind of values which is more uh, portable and more usable because one of the things I'm going to be doing later on is I'm going to be using Google Maps to work out which distilleries I need to go to. I mean, what places we need to go with the family. Alright, so um, yeah, so so we have that in. So that's kind of the extra things that that's going to be in it. And just like you know, you would be doing as part of any of your, your Python code, you're going to be exploring the data in, in different ways. So we can look at, at the start of it. We can look at the last few records. We can go and explore it in different ways. Now, as you might want to see, is that this is a, a big data project. Right? Yeah, we've 86 records, right? So it's, it's an enormous, right? So kind of, for some people that might be actually big data, but you know, but you know, it just kind of goes to prove that well, you don't need big data to be able to do this. Is once you have data, you can actually start using some of the, the machine learning and the data science approaches to find patterns in your data and being able to get some value out. Of it, okay. So we, we have our different uh, attributes on it, and then we go and explore the data. We find out that all the different data types. And this is actually going to be quite useful to me later on, because usually when you get into your data science projects, or before you put the data, or send the data into the machine learning algorithms, the data is expected to be all in numerical format. For, for us, it's kind of already there, so that's kind of to, to a large extent, means our kind of data preparation and uh, uh, any transformation we need to do is kept to a minimum. And then, you know, we can go and start exploring it, you know, doing some of the kind of our descriptive analytics on it. We can then take each individual variable or each individual attribute feature uh, and explore it in, in lots of different ways. And then, really what we want to do is, like, the next stage in kind of working towards our machine learning is we need to start dividing the data out, kind of extracting out certain kind of features of it. So one of the, the ones that I had in it was to do with the row ID, which was just a sequence number. That's irrelevant to us, so we can just eliminate that. The latitude longitude is not really important when it comes to flavour, because I'm going after flavour, okay? Now, some people might think certain regions within Scotland might have certain kind of things, so I was kind of like, let's just take geographic location out of it, let's kind of just look at the, at the, at the core characteristics of it. So we can, we can explore that in, in a couple of different ways. Right, so I'll just, that's a bit long, I should have made that a bit shorter. So, get me down. So, like I said, the data preparation was actually quite easy for this particular data set because a lot of it was in numerical format. So, all of those different uh, variables that we have across the top here, these are the ones that someone from that research project, um, I'm sure they really enjoyed it, um, they decided on these, and, you know, you kind of think of tasting notes, whether you're into wine tasting or, or beer tasting and, and, and being able to record those. So they went and explored all that particular data. Uh, and we've taken the name out of it, we've taken the lat long out of it, we just want to have it purely on those particular characteristics. Like I said, big data problem, or 86 records in. So once we've gotten that, so we've gotten the data, we've explored it, we can see the shape of it, uh, we've, we've, we've taken away some of the kind of the descriptive information, the relevant type of information, we've gotten a core. So what I want to do now is I want to do some clustering on it. Can I group these uh, whiskies and distilleries into related groups? Okay, so related groups based on those flavour characteristics. So I'm going to use clustering, k-means clustering on it. But when it comes to k-means clustering is that I don't know how many clusters I need to use. Yeah, I can go through the process of iteratively going through it and kind of working it out myself, or I can just use a simple bit of code that you'll find anywhere on the internet that will actually loop through that automatically for you. And what we get is this kind of you know line which kind of tells us like almost like the error rate, and the error rate kind of tells us about how dense the clusters are, so how com compact they are. So so the more compact they are and the lower the error rate, the more those whiskies are related to one another, or that those data points are related to. One Okay, so if I talk both sides of the room here, you know, you're all pretty well kind of distributed in a way, so you're all kind of having roughly the same score. And the whole idea is when you're going down through a line like this, 
kind of sometimes called the elbow chart, so it's kind of like your arm coming down. Where you hit the elbow is kind of roughly might be the best dividing point, because after that what you're doing is you're taking a dense cluster and just breaking it out into two smaller clusters that have roughly the same kind of value. So what I'm going to say is, just for simplicity, let's take four. So it kind of starts dividing out around about there. Now, I could have went six and I could have went eight, but let's bring it out into four different categories. So once I've done that, I need to effectively rerun the k-means again for setting it to four. Uh, where is it? It's up here. So I'm going to set it to four. I'm going to rerun it again and to do the predictions. So I want to, want to get that out is for each of those individual records that I have in there, here's the clusters that they actually belong to. Now what I want to do is um, kind of take those clusters and go and like, let's examine the machine learning model, the cluster model that it has given us. And what we can do is we can examine the central. So for each of those individual four clusters is, can you tell me the attributes and what would be the values of those that contribute towards saying somebody's in cluster one versus cluster two versus cluster three and cluster four. And we get these kind of range of values. Now, this isn't necessarily something that you're going to be e that's easy to read. Right? So after a little bit of exploring in that, what I discover is cluster number one is uh, quite close to my particular taste. So I have a small whiskey collection at home. Um, that I've been gathering over the last few years. Um, and what I kind of did is I, I took those same characteristics, those same attributes, and went through all of my kind of whiskeys and kind of went, okay, how would I score them? And then worked out what would be my flavor. You know, what would be closest to my flavor. Because remember, the holiday's about me. I don't want to go visiting the whiskeys that I don't like. Because that's not going to be any fun. Because the wife and kids will only hear the moaning. All right? And so we don't want to ruin it for them. All right? So we want this an enjoyable holiday. All right. So what I work out is that particular uh, uh, cluster it's actually matches my taste closest because you know I, I like kind of quite neutral whiskies. I don't like smoky. I don't like tobacco. I don't like the really strong ones. So um, some people would say I'm completely wrong on that particular flavour, but that's my flavour. Right. So it's kind of like let, let's go and kind of use that. Right. So so being able to do that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take all of those. Uh, uh, cluster values to each of those points, you know, there is a data frame, and I'm just going to add them on to our data set. So we get for each of the different uh, distilleries what, which particular cluster that they belong to. So that kind of gives us our core data set that we can start exploring it. Okay, that's just it resorted in, in, a, in a different way. Let me just scroll down past that. So when I look at this, this data, what we get to see is for the four clusters, we see that, well, the one that actually matches my taste uh, closest has 19 distilleries. This could be a very good holiday. <laughs> We're only going for a week. <laughs> like I said, it could be a very good holiday, right? But you know, I have to allow some time for the family, right? So it can't be just me going to three roughly distilleries a day, right? Um, anyway, I, I probably wouldn't remember the holiday if I did that, right? So it's kind of like, you know, when we start exploring it, then it's like, okay, that's kind of working out. Here's the whiskies or the, the clusters that kind of suits my taste. So can I actually start plotting these out on, on Google Maps? So then I go through the process of, you know, I, I connect into to Google Maps, I set up a, a, an API key, um, and then what I do is, can I actually draw a map of Scotland? Okay. Which I can. So that's kind of relatively easy. So the next thing is what I want to do is, can I build upon that and go, um, can I start putting markers down? So what I'm going to do is kind of, here's one particular location, it's roughly in the, in the middle of Scotland. So can I put a marker down for that? And it's, yeah, I can. So that's good, we're building it up. And the next thing is, well, what if I took all of those whiskey locations? Right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the, that data set that has the, the, the lat long that I kind of uh, recalculated in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot the, all of those. So I'm going to just make that a little bit smaller. Where is it then? All right. You get to see this is where all the whiskies are. Now, we're not going to all 83 or 86 uh, distilleries. So Let's start looking at, can I actually kind of explore those, can I actually categorize those 
into each of the different clusters? Can I actually point them out? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the lat long from each one of those and create different subsets of the data, which is here. So I'm going to create different subsets of the data for each of those particular clusters. And then I'm going to assign each of those clusters a different marker and a different color. Okay? So I want to come along and plot that again. I get to see this here. Again, lots of different all over the place. We get to see some are quite high up on the islands, some are quite you know, over to the western islands and stuff like that. So, but what about the cluster that I'm interested in? So if I just kind of take that same code and just comment out for the other three clusters and just include the one that I'm looking for and plot it again, I get here's are the distilleries, the whiskies that I'm really going to be interested in. Now, I know it's a driving holiday, and, you, and to go from uh, over to Scotland, we go from Blarn over to Stranraer. So I can cope with that, it's on a big boat, right? So, and, and, and it's quite a, a short trip. But what I'm kind of going is like, well, these other ones over here are going to be out in islands, they're a little bit awkward to get to, they're going to be much smaller boats. Boats, water, me, not a good mixture. And then if we add in water and whiskey. Yeah, I mean, right, so it's, you know, it might be a good combination. Uh, and then also the ones way up high, it's, that's a lot of driving, that's, you're going a long way. So I'm kind of like taking some of the requirements off, it's that, hey, it's a bit of a driving holiday, now I need to take the data and the results for her, and then apply some of my, my, my business problem issues to it, to do some filtering on it. So I'm going to filter that, we're not going to go up past here, Okay, up, up past the Inverness, and we're not going to go over to these islands. So I'm going to do a filtering on all of, on all of that. Um, right? But uh, before I get onto the filtering, is can I actually do driving routes now? So this is again pl uh, plugging into the, the Google Maps, the Google API, being able to do driving routes. So I kind of worked out, you know, up around Fort William, you know, it's probably going to be one of the first stops. That's one of the the, the whiskey because Fort William is where. What's beside Fort William? Uh, Loch Ness. Ness. Yeah. So we're going for the family to visit Loch Ness. One of the first distilleries is right beside it. <laughs> All right. So coincidental. Or not, right. So so we look at it. But you know, out of that kind of data set, there's 19 distilleries. All right. And uh, if I was to do the driving route for all of that, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's 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 not a good idea. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that particular data set. And I'm going to do some filtering on it based on the, the lat, latitude and longitude. So I'm going to remove the ones that are really far up and the ones that are kind of off to the, the west coast. So I'm going to filter those off. And when I do that filtering, I go from 19 whiskey, uh, sorry, distilleries. Um, remember, they might have multiple whiskeys. Um, uh, 19 distilleries down to 9. It's a week's holiday. It's a bit more doable, isn't it? <laughs> all right, so it's looking, looking a bit more promising. All right, so if I, if, if I take those and redraw them with, with just those distilleries, what I get is something that looks like that, which kind of brings us on a bit of a circle around Scotland. That's handy. <laughs> and it just happens to tie in with some of the places that the family would like to go and visit. That's handy. All right. So, so we can look at that, but you know, the, the driving route there is a little bit all over the place. So, well, what I end up by doing is I just end up by sorting the data a little bit more uh, to give us a bit more of a kind of a clockwise direction. So we get a driving route like that, which is good. So the next thing I want to do is, well, we, we end up over here at number H. And it's kind of like, well, we have to go back to the ferry port. So if I add that in as our end point and, and, and run that, is that that is a very long drive back, isn't it? All right, and it's kind of, I don't fancy that. But remember, there's other people going on this holiday. It's not about the last distillery that we go to. So it's kind of the, you know, the wife and kids would like to go to Edinburgh. All right? um, so, um, so well, I'm going to add that in as a stop. But before that, is if I zoom in a wee bit on this, What we'll find is, there's a couple of scenarios where there's two distilleries right beside each other. You kind of go, doing two distilleries in a day might be a challenge. All right? Kind of like, oh, yeah, we visit one, I might be allowed that. 
And then a few kilometers up the road, we get another one. Oh, look. All right. And it's just like, that's not going to work. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a filter to it. So it's just going to do a distance measure. So it's kind of a, again, if you look for a function that will calculate distances uh, on, on Google, you, you'll come across this piece of code. So I, get, I, I, I took that and been able to say as well, let's have a minimum distance of 25 kilometers. So let's pretend we've, we've driven a reasonable amount. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through that particular kind of sorting process again, just expanding out the piece of code that I have, but this time I'm adding in the filter is that, well, if there's another distillery within 25 kilometers, I'm going to skip it. All right? so I'm just trying to be nice. All right? and, and when I do that, I discover, well, just two distilleries that come out. Okay? So when I draw that route now, so we're gone from nine down to seven. It's becoming more realistic, isn't it? Right, a more kind of achievable, you know, and more chance of me getting away with it. Right, so we get a nice kind of route to being able to plan around all of that. Um, but remember, I said you know we need to do something for the the family, and they all want to go to Edinburgh. All right, so when I kind of add in Edinburgh into the data set and being able to plot that out, you kind of go, well, you know, the the drive back to to get the ferry isn't that far. You know that picture that I showed you at the beginning of the bar with all the whiskies. That's from a bar in Edinburgh. Um, so, like I said, just tell us about me. So, um, so, yeah, so it's all good, right? So we can, we can build that all in, all right? Now, the next thing is, can I get the driving directions? So I've done all of this work. You know, again, you know, remember, we've done some machine learning on it. It's formed part of the, the solution and is driving everything else that I've kind of done since doing that. So I want to go into kind of Google Maps and get the driving directions. We get a lovely JSON object back, yeah, which is all really easy to read. You can all read that and understand, right? So if we if we do the kind of the pretty print on it, you know, we get something that's a little bit more readable, and there's a huge amount of information in here. So we can start getting out, you know, between the different data points, you know, how far is it, roughly how long it's going to be, and then if I kind of structure a bit of the code on it, then I can extract out all the different driving instructions on it. But when we examine this, we get to see that well, there's some, you know, there's some um, tags within the data set. And kind of going like, well, maybe um, you know, I need to do a bit of a clean up on that. Again, you know, just a standard bit of code that if you Google for it, that will just remove those tags for it. What I do now is I just wrap the, the, the driving instructions on that and just format it slightly differently. So I can get the instructions out, the driving directions out. So that's all pretty good. Right? Uh, and then uh, what I need to do is go and get the driving directions. So I've proven it for, for between two points and then just loop through all the different data points that I've gathered up. And that goes off and gathers all of those different um, uh, driving in instructions for, for what we want to be able to do. Okay. Now, one of the last things we want to do, because you know, I'm kinda, I like working with databases, I work with databases all the time, I'm going to take that data and what I'm going to feed it back now is I'm going to feed that, all of that information, that, those maps, those instructions back into the database because I want to be able to store it and be able, able to access it uh, offline. So I'm going to take all of that um, and again just taking the, the code that I've just taken up again, I'm going to create a function that just does, that does the insert into it and then if I just run this now, just fingers crossed on conference Wi-Fi, what we should start seeing is the those instructions being inserted into my database on the cloud, right? And everything to do with the from the map to the in, uh, the, the different data uh, points um, and all the different instructions for each one of those. <coughs> okay, so we should be. Is that it? Or is there one more? There, and we're we're all done. So the, the way to kind of go and kind of prove all of that is. Let's see, do I need to reconnect? Are we still alive? So if I reconnect and all of that, so the data is there, if I go into the database, what I can see is, so this is coming from my cloud database. There's the map that I created earlier. Okay, and then, um, where is it? Directions. Oh, up to go. And there's all the directions that you saw being in being messages being sent in being there. So there's an example of how I kind of took a particular problem, 
try to have a little bit of fun with it, see what it actually worked for my particular scenario, uh, and you know, being able to you know go through kind of your typical machine learning, data sciencey type approach, using you know clustering as the, as the main method, and being able to kind of not just explore the data, I can come along and start you know, using some of these different machine learning, using some of the, the, the different APIs on it, to be able to go towards building out a full solution. Now, one of the things is, I didn't stop there. Now, un unfortunately, <laughs> you're, you're all sympathizing with my family now, aren't you? Right? So it's like, I do have a data model, that's just, just some fallback slide, just in case internet went down. So in a way, it's a little bit like the old, it's kind of like do or not do, like, you know, go give these things a try. Like, they're not necessarily all that kind of difficult to be able to go and do. Uh, and what I did afterwards is like, you know, just different APIs into Airbnb, into um, um, some of these other kind of trip advisor and things like that. So I went and, you know, took the code and kind of explored into that and find things that might be suitable for my kids might be interested in and suitable places to stay. And I was able to load that all in the database and what I kind of have this load code environment that sits on top of an Oracle database. So I have this little application that I can now access on my phone that will contain everything that I've just done. So I don't have time to go through that application. So and, and, and it is a bit about kind of like, you know, we need to have a little bit of fun about this. If we have a bit of fun, you might discover things along the way uh, about how we do it. And you'll remember that like machine learning and all of these kind of different technologies are just one ingredient to building out a solution. Okay. So that kind of brings us to roughly the time. So remember if you, if you want to get the, the copy of the, the notebook and the data set, you know, uh, follow me on Twitter and I'll be posting that out Monday, kind of choose the time. Uh, and thank you all for following. Uh, I'm going to ask myself a question. This is a question that somebody asked me earlier. Is did I do validation? No, look, an important part of machine learning is validation testing. So did the distilleries that I visit, did they live up to the standard? What I say is the bar here has a really good selection of whiskies along with the top shelf. Right? So if you want to discuss the validation aspects of this, we can go and do some in the back.